Alba charging through here. He's got players on the side. He's done it. Alan, please. Yo, yo, boys and girls. It's your boy, Diverse here, back with another video for the channel. Hope you're all enjoying the content recently. If you are, make sure you hit subscribe down below, like it, and even leaving a comment saying your favourite bit of the video or the season so far. But being a Southend fan, it's a bit hard to do that second bit, so I won't judge anyone on here. But today is a pivotal day for the Blues. We are away to Stevenage. Stevenage winning two of their last five games, drawing one and losing the other two, with some former players, I've got to say, against Alex Revel, the former Southend striker as their manager, and the likes of of Luke Prosser and Ben Coker at the back, both in our promotion winning season, which I've got to say, that is always a daunting thing. I don't know how their form's doing now, but you know, when you always come up against your ex players, you know they're going to be really good against you. As for the Blues today, a few changes from last week. John White is out with a hamstring injury, so we see Richard Taylor slot in at the back instead of that. And up front, Aqua also returns to the squad with Tom Clifford coming in at that left back spot. Got to say, why aren't we starting Crepriano instead of Taylor? He's been phenomenal recently, and now we've just dropped him to the bench. Like, what are you doing, Mosley? Got to say, though, today is going to be a really pivotal day. Southend, we've only one win in the last 20-odd games, so the ball starts in Stevenage's court, but we need to bring something here today. We've obviously we've got James Olinka in the midfield. We've got Alan McCormick, who was a big influence last week. I've got to say, he did bits. And when he came off, yeah, we struggled really badly. So hopefully we can get a bit more of him out of today's game. And he can boss that midfield and be controlling and loud in the middle. Which is, I think, what we need. Good chip starts again, even after his terrible string of open goal misses recently. Which is really hard to watch, being a South End fan. But anyway, boys and girls, let's get straight into the video now. Even though South End do find themselves away today, it is great to see fans inside the stadium. Even if it is the, the opposite team's fans, it's just great to see fans back in the stadium cheering your team. I've seen here, there's a lot, one, there's a fair few seats full in the Stevenage Stadium, which are behind their boys, which is great to see. I can't wait to be back at Roots Hall next week. Which, by the way, if you're unable to make the game next week or you can't get a ticket, head over to my Twitter. I'm going to be doing a match I follow giveaway for anyone who can't get to the game next week. I think we should all deserve to see our, the fans back in Route 2. So if you want to be in that, make sure you're subscribed and liking down below. Because if I pick you, then you best know I'll be asking you to check them things out. But anyway, into the game today. Come on, Blues! So to break down the Blues formation here really early on, we've got Dieng and Hobbs in the back, which fills me a bit more of confidence knowing we've got a bit of experience in the back with Dieng. But Richard Taylor is playing as a right winger. What the feck is that? Why? Just what? We've got other wingers we've got other midfielders and we've got a centre back slash right back playing as a left winger come again 12 minutes on the clock here Blues earn themselves a free kick out wide Tom Clifford and Demetrio over after some really nice play between Clifford and Olienka earned them a free kick Blues been on top I'd say in these first couple minutes in the game you know we haven't let anything really get in but Clifford whips the ball in quickly into Goodchip's feet edge of the box goes to the shot and it was tipped over by the keeper jeez Goodchip you've got a shot on target man whoa that, again, that's a set piece I think we've practiced on the training ground. They're really quickly played into good receipt. Gets the shot off and the keeper has to tip it over the crossbar last second there. Corner coming up for the Blues. Corner here from the Blues. Clifford whips it in. Going towards the balance. Off the head of Dieng and behind the back. No, Dieng. He got his head to it. Rose nice and high, but put it wide of the post. And he had the open of the net open to him to put it in. Damn, good chance there from the Blues. Maybe should have been taken. 14 minutes on the clock. Go on, Elvis. Elvis charging. Long range shot. Oh, okay. Bit excited there. Boy, I just had a shot from outside the box, skimming the crossbar almost, but a bit ambitious. I'll give him that. Blues forced into an early change here. 20 minutes on the clock. Tom Clifford having to come off after a nasty challenge earlier in the game from the Stevenage player. He played it off for a bit, but evidently he's come off now. Harry Kripriano has come on after his great performances in recent weeks here. And then just a couple seconds ago, a clash of heads between Emil Aqua and the Stevenage, I believe fullback. Reminds you many years ago of the Michael Timlin situation for Southend. But free kick going to come up here for the Blues. Hopefully we'll make something of it. Half time, just blown here. Nil nil, South End and Stevenage. Gotta say, like I said, scrappy game really. No clear cut chances between the bottom two, two bottom two teams in the league today. 
it's been almost both teams going up the other end, trying to send in a good ball, and it's either not worked or the set up play to a, like an attack hasn't worked for either team. Gotta say, South End from from a fan point of view, Aqua doing really well up top, using his body a lot more to control the ball, to bring it in, to set some up, to run off. Richard Taylor as a right winger is. It's all right, actually. I thought it'd be absolutely disastrous, but he's been that big lump. He's using the height advantage over Ben Coker at left back and almost taking it as an advantage to flip the ball on to Oli Inca, who would then try and find Aqua, which is really good to see. Stevenage, though, defence-wise, very strong. Haven't let much through, have they? Hobson, I'm going to say man of the match first half. He has not let a thing get past him. He's done smart, safe options all half, and I think he's learnt quite a bit from the likes of Harry Lennon and John White being next to him for a few games. Hopefully, we're going to the second half. Maybe nick a goal or two if we do brilliant stuff but let's just try and hold out and keep like not concede a goal just please come on you blues Demetrius is through here going into the box plays it along the floor it missed aqua richard taylor no blocked by ben coker and steven's clear shoot come on come on blues keep going only one minute into the second half Oh, shoot, Stevenage, number 10, has just hit the bar from the edge of the box. Corner, not clear properly by Booze. No Stevenage players took it up, apart from the number 10. On the edge of the box, he goes for a crack in the far corner and tips off the top of the bar. God damn, and don't ask why I'm holding a light over here. It was about to fall off, because I hit the desk at the same time that happened. 50-odd minutes on the clock. Come on, Blues, wakey-wakey. 65 minutes on the clock and the second half is living up to the same expectation as the first. Very scrappy. The game is here for anyone to take. Stevenage have had a good few chances towards the beginning of the second half. Southend starting to break into it a bit more. Maybe should be taking the chances a bit better. They're being given. But like I said, this is anyone's game for the taking. I reckon whoever gets this next goal, or if there is a goal, it will that will be the winner. Game over, I'm sure of it. 65 on the clock there. Richard Taylor is playing with fire here, everyone. The number 22 for South End, who's already on the yellow, and a warning, by the way, just slid in on the Stevenage forward, took him down, and it was no card. I am stunned by that. And just as this has happened now, he has just been taken off for Terrell Eggbury. The call I said that I wanted to happen has happened, and it's almost good to save Richard Taylor getting a red card and us losing another person due to injury or suspension, because it is shocking lately how many we've got. Anyway, Steven is free kick here, whipped in high to the back, D above Dieng's head and caught by Oxley, just rolled into his gloves there. 77 on the clock. Right, boys and girls, we've changed up the camera here as the phone was about to die for the recording. We can't have that. We're bringing the best content we can. Stevenage on the attack here. Harry Kripnani, brilliant challenge there, Harry. 82 on the clock. Come on. Blues coming forward here. Good chip going into the box. Cross into the middle. Over Aqua. No. Out Alan McCormack on the volley. No. Alan. Oh, my God. He has hit it from outside the box and it has literally skimmed the post and gone wide. Fuck. Jesus, that was, oh, I so want us to nick this late on here. Oh, come on, Blues, like 89 on the clock. We've got a couple minutes of added time coming up here. Eggbree's done it as well. <laughs> Eggbree ran in from the wing into the box, beat two defenders, and he's put it wide of the right post. No, two chances. Oli Inca was free in space at the back. No. Come on, Alan, Alan McCormack charging through here. He's got players on the side. He's done it, Alan, please. No, he's lost it last second. The Steelers defender caught up with him. No, Alan, you, wait, what? Oh my God, oh my, oh my God. Alan McCormack has just fucked it. The Steamish defender played it back to the goalkeeper, meaning no players would be offside for South End. McCormack was next to the goalkeeper, and he's misplaced the pass, and we could have just nicked that. We literally could have just nicked that in the last second! 89 on the clock. Oh, no, Steamish are coming forward. Oh, Stevenage came close there, boys. Flicked on header by the Stevenage forward. Couldn't find his teammate with the outstretched leg. Nearly, nearly a goal there for Stevenage at the back post. Four minutes of added time just given by the assistant on the side there. Four minutes to go. Corner, Stevenage, last kick of the game. Headed into the ball. Oh, shit. Oh, did I hit the bar? I think it's hit. No, it's gone out. Okay, it went out and it hit the post stick behind. And the game is over. Nil-nil away to Stevenage on the return of fans to the football game that we all love. Review coming very shortly. 
Right, boys and girls, return to the original setup that we had going here. The light over there has just blown its bulb, and I've had to put like a torch down here to brighten it up a bit, but that's not the point. South End nil, Stevenage nil. Perspectively, looking from a South End fan, it's not good enough. We ne we needed three points badly, you know. And I'm sure the players are going to be thinking that as towards the end of the game, that game was there for the taking. And even Stephen and Chance, I feel some of you could agree with me. Towards the end of that game, you're almost handing us the three points out and we've just slapped you away and said, now we're not having them. Even though we've had probably the best chances of the game towards those final 10 minutes. As for my, the match for that entire game, he's got to be the 37-year-old Alan McCormack. But it does reveal the question... Why is our 37-year-old central midfielder our best player? And he had one of the best chances of the game. And our strikers had pretty much no chances to score, to put the ball in the net, or to even set something up. So it always opens the question, why is he the best player? On a positive note, clean sheet, great to see. That'll do Oxley a world of confidence. Thought Hobson was also really good today, as was Tom Clifford before the injury. Elvis starting to regain a little bit of his old self, I feel, but that will come naturally to the whole team with the confidence. But a clean sheet is a positive to take, but one point, not good enough against the team in 23rd, literally right above us. Hopefully, other results will help us out here. I know Scumfort won, our, won earlier on against Leighton Orient, so that really does not help us, and it leaves us a bit in the poo. But on to next week. We are at home. We will have the fans behind the boys. I know for one, I will be there. I will be there vlogging the first time in a while. The vlogs are going to be coming out live by the game. It is, I've been waiting so long for this, boys. Because I hope you can all tune in next Saturday night or Sunday morning, whenever you can, when the video is released. And make sure to give it a watch. If you can't attend the game or if you do, just a laugh at me. Why not? And like I said at the beginning of the video, I will be giving away a match follow pass. If you can't make the game next week or you you don't have a season ticket but you want to go i will give away a match follow pass to you 10 pounds i will send it to you you can buy that i follow pass and you can watch the blue boys home and get behind the team as next week will be massive for our season with the fans getting behind the boys hopefully on to victory on to better times come on you blues hope you've enjoyed the video my name has been diversity and it goes peace